some of the most important things that you may have to deal with, right? Hopefully, we never have to deal with any of this stuff, right? But it's kind of like having a fire escape plan or insurance on your vehicle or whatever, on your health, you know? Hopefully, you never have to use those things, but it's nice to have in case you do, right? Uh, there's things that are what I call uh, not so common common sense, right? Things that we, they, we, I think we know it, but sometimes we need somebody to say it to us, and like, oh yeah, that's right, right, right. Uh, like, you know you should park in a well-lit area, right? You know you should travel in groups as much as possible, right? You know that uh, when you're leaving the store and headed out to your car, you should already have your keys in your hand, not looking for your keys when you get to your car. You should know that uh, who has an alarm on their keychain for their car. Right? That's another good reason to have the keys in your hand. Okay. Uh, just paying attention to your surroundings, right? Another thing is an attacker maybe isn't always trying to attack the person to, to inflict damage on the person. It might be that the attacker wants something that you have. Right? So I always like that, and, and this is always gets a rise out of a lot of the ladies I talk to. Nothing in your purse is worth your life. Right? So don't fight to hold on to your purse or your bag or whatever like that. If a bad guy is trying to take it from you and, and, and there's risk of your own life and then versus keeping that purse, it's my favorite purse. I know. I'm married, I know. But um, create distance between you and what the attacker wants, okay? So if the attacker is trying to steal your purse, rather than you clinging onto it and, and, and fighting for that, guess what happens? If you throw the purse off to the side and that's what they really want, what are they gonna go for? The purse, does that give you space to get away? Yes, all right? So that's something, that's one of those uh, common, or uncommon common sense things, right? That just makes sense when you hear it, right? But we don't really think about that all this. So, so that's just kind of some of the things, you know. And you, and you think about um, strategy. The bad guys have a strategy. They have a plan, and they're not dummies. Okay? There's there's serial attackers, serial killers out there, serial rapists out there. Bad guys have a plan. They have a strategy. So, and and they, they their intention is to act on that strategy. Uh, when they find a potential victim, right? And the victim is a person who does not have a counter strategy. So if you have a counter strategy, then you're less likely to be victimized by that bad guy. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So just having the knowledge, just, just having that is a good line of defense. Right? Now what I also like to let you know is, first of all, let me raise your hand. Maybe. <laughs> it's awful. I don't see Corey in here, though, so I can really sit down. So, we got the gym, please. Train us. Train us. You can raise your hand if you So, um, Jiu Jitsu and martial arts are not just for boys, right? It's for girls, also. Um, and the stuff that I showed you tonight is stuff that's relatively easy to remember, relatively easy to apply, but practice, practice, practice is how you build a nice solid foundation, right? And your confidence level. And when we do this stuff that we do in Jiu Jitsu uh, in our regular classes, what happens is, number one, you learn about problem solving, right? Aaliyah and I went through last night uh, doing sparring, grappling sparring, right? And I guarantee you, I smashed her a few times. And I guarantee you, she escaped it, okay? And, and the reason she's able to escape those things is because she practices regularly. And instead of freezing up and freaking out and panicking, when somebody is smashing her, she goes into plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, all the way until finally she escapes, right? She doesn't give up. 
So um, your regular training helps you with your problem solving, as far as that goes. It also helps you with what we call being comfortable, being uncomfortable, right? Obviously, some of the positions we work through tonight are not ideally, I mean, it's not comfortable, right? If you're working with a practice partner that you trust, right? Even even with that, it's kind of it's weird. You know, it's a little bit weird. Somebody's sitting on you or something, they're between your legs or, you know, whatever, right? So it's just kind of weird, right? And in a real life attack situation, panic is one of our worst enemies, right? Because you hear of the term fight or flight, the one that's missing is freeze. And that's the one that really happens most of the time. Fight, 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 or freeze, right? And so people freeze up, and that's what gets them in trouble, right? So being comfortable, being uncomfortable, the stuff that we practice helps keep that from happening. So in a, in a live uh, attack situation, rather than freezing up, you're able to act, you're able to do something, right? And that's super important. Mm -hmm. And there's a problem solving aspect of it, right? Problem solving on more than just the self defense level, right? Problem solving like, um, how many of you guys have had a relatively bad day and then come in and practiced martial arts and felt way better for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, right? That's what happens. The problems that were going on before you got here are a little bit less serious after you get in here and somebody's choking you and arm locking you and right, smashing you, right? All of a sudden you're like, ah, oh, yeah, my, you know, popsicle melted earlier today, it's not something bad, <laughs> right? Okay, so, um, <laughs> you sat with the kids in and talking to them. They all like, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, you know, the, the problem solving aspect of it, the stress relief from it, you know, all that stuff backwards in. That's why we love doing what we do. People see us in there sometimes wrestling around with each other and kind of, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you? This is awesome, right? Uh, does anybody know about? Uh, Oxytocin. So hormone. It's the bonding hormone, right? It's the hormone that's released during childbirth that makes the mother want to bond with the child, right? It's also a hormone that's released when you do a 20 second hug. Right? It's 20, 22 seconds. Like 20, 22 second hug right? releases oxytocin, which is a bonding hormone. Right? All of us in the hug each other. It's rough hugs. But that's part of what makes us feel good in practice too, right? It's because of this this person-to-person uh, -person contact, we're hugging each other, we're, we're having fun and wrestling around with each other. It's fun for us, right? And there's an endorphin release too. So at the, at the end of the day, when we're done, I hardly ever see frowning faces getting off the map. I don't know that I've ever seen that. I don't know. It's, it's a good thing and I recommend it for you. Um, it's, and, and you know, we, I'm biased still, so I say it's for everybody. Everybody should do this, right? But the, the truth of it is there's a bit of a commitment, you know, so if you want to learn martial arts, it's different than a self-defense seminar, right? Self-defense seminar is just, we, we did our thing today and then we're gonna go out and go and hopefully remember it, we're gonna post a video to so remind you of it, right? But martial arts, you know, jujitsu, it's it's kind of you're in it for the long haul. Uh, but the rewards are fantastic. Right? I've been doing martial arts for almost 35 years, and I'm st I still get excited. About it. So far, I'm mm -hmm. a lot So, you guys like it? Yes, sir. All right. So I think, um, old guy, I'm carrying you guys already.